So there was this guy, Aegeus, who was the king of Athens. None of his wives were able to give him a male heir, so he traveled to the Oracle of Delphi to inquire about his problem, in the hopes of receiving an annoyingly cryptic response. The bulging mouth of the wineskin, O best of men, loose not until thou hast reached the height of Athens. I have no f***ing idea what that means. Thanks a ton, you do great work here. Then on his way back home, he visited Pythias, king of Trozen, and told him the confounding prophecy. Pythias realized that the oracle was warning Aegeus not to sleep with anyone until returning home to his wives in Athens, for the next child conceived by him would be his heir. So Pythias proceeded to get Aegeus absolutely sloshed and sent him to sleep with his daughter Aethra. And on that same night, the god Poseidon also came by and slept with Aethra. Quite the night for her. Upon leaving, Aegeus took a sword and a pair of sandals and stuffed them under a boulder. He told Aethra that if she had a son, to raise him without telling him the identity of his father, who may or may not have actually been Poseidon, but whatever. Once the boy was old enough to move the boulder, she'd then send him to Athens with the items underneath. Nine months later, Aethra gave birth to a boy who she named Theseus. And when he grew up, he did the thing his dad said to do, and set out for Athens. Though he would have to overcome several fierce enemies on the way. There was Periphides, a guy who would attack passers-by with a big club, and Sinus, a guy who slingshotted people off of pine trees. He got a taste of his own medicine. There was a monstrous sow named Phaea, and her pet pig, also named Phaea. <laughs> that was a sick burn. Siron, a guy who would feed people to his giant pet turtle, the wrestler Circeon. And last but not least, there was Procrustes, a guy who would invite unsuspecting travelers into his home to sleep in his beds. People who were too short for his beds, he would beat flat until they fit snugly end to end, and people too tall got their protruding limbs chopped off. After ridding the land of all these villains, Theseus finally arrived in Athens and met up with his father. But neither of them knew they were related because Aegeus is stupid. One of Aegeus's wives was Medea, a Hecatean priestess who has already done a lot of stuff that I haven't talked about yet. I'm bad at planning the order of these videos, okay? Anyway, Medea decided she was in the mood for scheming and told her husband that Theseus was a spy sent to usurp his throne. So Aegeus commanded Theseus to battle the Bull of Marathon, which had slain Androgeus, the Prince of Crete. But after Theseus successfully returned from the task, Medea recommended her own strategy of getting rid of him. Uh, good job, kid! Here, why don't we toast to your victory with some non-poisonous wine? Wink directed at Medea. Cool, thanks. Say, your sword and sandals actually look familiar. Hmm? Oh yeah, they were hidden under a boulder since before I was born. My mom told me to come here once I was strong enough to get them out. Huh. Oh shit, wait, I'm your father! After Medea was banished for her treacherous shenanigans, it came time for Athens to once again send their tribute of seven young men and women into the labyrinth to be devoured by the Minotaur. Theseus bravely volunteered to go and swore that he'd slay the monster to end King Minos's reign of terror. The tributes were sent away in a ship with a black sail. However, Aegeus told his son should he succeed in his quest to raise a white sail on his return voyage. That way he'd know Theseus made it back alive. And with that, Theseus set off and soon arrived in Crete. Sir, I noticed that our mast sustained damage during our voyage. Oh, then go ahead and get it replaced. I'm sure doing so won't prompt any upsetting philosophical quandaries. Aye, sir. Once there, Theseus soon caught the eye of Minos's daughter, Ariadne, who fell madly in love with him. She swore to help him on his quest to slay the Minotaur, on the condition that he would then take her back to Athens as his wife. Theseus agreed, and Ariadne commanded the master inventor Daedalus to reveal how one might be able to escape from his confounding labyrinth. Well, to conquer the labyrinth, you'll need to utilize one of my most advanced creations yet. I call it... String. Once inside the labyrinth, Theseus tied one end of his thread to the entrance and journeyed into the maze, unraveling the ball as he went. Once reaching the center, he heroically slew the Minotaur with his bare hands. Anticlimactic, I know. And then he followed his thread back to the entrance. Theseus and the other tributes then snuck back to his ship, along with his new fiancée, Ariadne. However, before they could set off again, the god Dionysus saw Ariadne and decided to snatch her away. Theseus was so bummed about this that, 
on their return voyage back to Athens, he forgot to make sure the crew lifted the white sail to signal his victory. When the ship came into view, Aegeus saw it was still flying its black sail and believed his son to be dead. So, in despair, he cast himself into the ocean. Man, it really sucks that I lost my fiancé to a horny god, but at least I'll get to see my dad again. Oh, hey, dad. Wait! Ah! Why didn't you put up the white sail when we set out? I'm sorry, sir, I got distracted. I, I installed the new mast, and then, well, it got me questioning the nature of identity, and- Ugh, you're so fired. With his father dead, Theseus became the new king of Athens. After killing his 50 cousins, to tidy up the line of succession, that is. And finally, after all these trials and tribulations, Theseus lived happily ever... Uh... uh yeah, this is gonna need a part three.